What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about King Charles 2023 Christmas message. I actually listened to the royal Christmas message for the very first time last year, which also happened to be the very first year that King Charles ever did it. And I have to say, it was nice. It was it was good. Like, I remember listening to this for the first time last year, and uh, he was authentic. He was inspiring. He talked about some cool stuff that happened last year, and he, he did a really good job, honestly. And there's nothing really like this Christmas message that happens here in the United States. Nothing that I can, like, relate it to. Whereas in, in Great Britain, this Christmas message is uh, an annual tradition where a lot of people in Britain, I know, like, gather around, uh, gather around the TV and actually watch this. So this is actually quite fun from my American point of view to even get to, to watch the Christmas message because we don't really have one. And I'm honestly very curious to see what King Charles has to say for the year of 2023 and what kind of message he's going to deliver and what he has to say. I I'm very curious, actually. So let's take a look. Many of the festivals of the great religions of the world are celebrated with a special meal, mm. a chance for family and friends to come together across generations. Yes. The act of sharing food, adding to conviviality and togetherness. <laughs> is, this, is, is this like a British thing? The very first thing that he has to say in the Royal Christmas address for the year is like, hey, we like to gather around and eat some food. For the, for the holidays, which as an American, I can actually very much relate to. I like this. The speech is about food so far. I, I agree. And, you know, joking aside, it is like a nice time of year for people to bond over holidays and food and whatnot. But I like this. It's like he incorporates a little casual or relatableness into what he's saying. Well, you know, we've only heard a few seconds, but at least let's keep going. For some, faith will be uppermost in their hearts. Mm -hmm. For others, it will be the joy of fellowship and the giving of presents. Mm -hmm. It is also a time when we remember those who are no longer with us and think also of those whose work of caring for others continues, even on this special day. My, oh my God, well, he is good. He is good. I can't help but think, is he, he must have prepared this speech. Is he reading a teleprompter or is he making this up as he goes? There's no way he's making this up. That would be amazing. Because this is like really, this is a nice speech. Like mentioning all the people, like family, those who have passed away, those who do good deeds. It's, it's just kind of nice and wholesome. This care and compassion we show to others is one of the themes of the Christmas story. Mm -hmm. Especially when... Mary and Joseph were offered shelter in their hour of need by strangers as they waited for Jesus to be born. Over this past year, my heart has been warmed by countless examples of the imaginative ways in which people are caring for one another. Mm. Go I, I feel like this was a part of his speech last year that I really, really liked. He emphasized a lot about the, the fellowship and the community of like the British people. He really emphasized in, emphasized in his holiday speech about people's like well-being towards each other and like coming together as families or communities. I remember this and I really like that. I like that he's talking about it again. Seems to be something he really emphasizes in these, uh, these holiday Christmas speeches. Doing the extra mile to help those around them simply because they know it is the right thing to do mm. at work and at home, within and across communities. Mm -hmm. My wife oh. and I were delighted when hundreds of representatives of that selfless army of people, volunteers who serve their communities in so many ways and with such distinction, oh, wow. were able to join us in Westminster Abbey for the coronation earlier this year. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, the coronation. I reacted to this as well. This is kind of the whole uh, yearly Christmas uh, message is it's very much in like it's 2023, 2024 now 
Like the actual production is like a lot more modern. They're like cutting to B-roll. They're cutting away from him talking. They're showing other clips. Like I feel like uh, older Christmas speeches that like I, I've seen some of the pictures uh, were just, you know, the queen talking. And that was it. I might be wrong, but this seems a lot more like modern, modernized, which I, I like. <laughs> they are an essential backbone of our society. Their presence meant so much to us both and emphasized the meaning of coronation itself. Mm. Above all, a call to all of us there they are. to serve one another, to love and care for all. Right, R so right. I, I like that too because uh, it's very easy when you're literally the king showing the coronation, you have a literal crown on with thousands of people cheering at you to make it all about you. Whereas he's clearly going out of his way to be like, we're here to serve each other. I'm here to serve you. And I, I think that's really good. That's a very nice thing to hear from the king. Uh, it's easy in that position to like become very self-focused. And he's trying to emphasize like, no, I am talking about all of us as a community. I like it. I like this. I like what he's saying. I gotta say, I like this speech. Service also lies at the heart of the Christmas story. The birth of Jesus who came to serve the whole world, showing us by his own example how to love our neighbor as ourselves. I also forgot there's like a religious aspect to the crown, I think, because I don't really, I don't view the UK as that religious of a country. I would expect to hear all these references to uh, Christianity and Jesus in a speech in the United States. That wouldn't surprise me. Maybe that's kind of more normal in the UK as well. He's, he's mentioned that a couple times now. Although I think that just has to do with the crown and the crown's relationship to, to religion, I think. Throughout the year, my family have witnessed how people of all ages are making a difference to their communities. Yeah. This oh. is all the more important at a time of real hardship for many when we need to build on existing ways to support others less fortunate than ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Because out of God's providence, we are blessed with much and it is incumbent on us to use this wisely. Man, the, and so far, like we're halfway through and the entire speech is just about how, how we can focus on helping other people. That's what the whole speech has been about, which is, I mean, pretty darn nice to, to hear. I like that that's the focus. It's nice. However, service to others is but one way of honoring the whole of creation, hmm. which, after okay. all, is a manifestation of the divine. Okay. This is a belief shared by all religions. To care for this creation is a responsibility owned by people of all faiths and of none. Hmm. There, and he's being very inclusive as well. Like, while also, you know, it, it's kind of difficult to bring in the religion aspect and relate to everybody sometimes, but he's doing a good job here, kind of including everyone. Uh, <laughs> this is like, <laughs> I'd love to know how much of this speech he wrote. Like, is he getting help? Is he making this up as he goes? This is really, really expertly done. Very nice speech. We care for the earth for the sake of our children's children. Mm. During my lifetime, I've been so pleased to see a growing awareness of how we must protect the earth and our natural world yeah. as the one home which we all share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find great inspiration now from the way so many people recognize this, as does the Christmas story, which tells us that angels brought the message of hope first to shepherds. These were people who lived simply amongst others of God's creatures. Mm. Those close to nature were privileged that night. Yeah, there's actually a lot of um, religious analogy analogies he's bringing into this. Is that normal? For the Christmas speech as well. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing. It's still like a really nice message that he's giving. It's just something I'm noticing that I, I don't think I realized last time how much he was talking about that. Um, and yeah, now he's talking about like 
taking care of the planet together. Like, this is very, it's nice. This has nothing to do with really Christmas so far. It's just, it's more of just an opportunity to spread goodwill and talk about how we should care about each other and the planet. Not really a Christmas speech, but I mean, yeah, I mean, you can kind of, you know, relate that all to the Christmas spirit, though. Either way, I like the direction he's taken here, rather than just saying like, oh, Merry Christmas and good night. Like, <laughs> I like these, uh, these things he's bringing up. Um, it's pretty inspiring. And at a time of increasingly tragic conflict around the world, mm. I pray that we can also do all in our power to protect each other. The words of Jesus seem more than ever relevant. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Right, right, right. Such values are universal. Right. Drawing together our Abrahamic family of religions and other belief systems across the Commonwealth and wider world. They remind us to imagine ourselves in the shoes of our neighbors mm -hmm. and to seek their good as we would our own. Man, we, we are like this entire Christmas broadcast message is almost done. And he's still t like over and over hammering down this same message of like, do unto others what uh, you want them to do to you and care for your neighbor. And it's, it's nice. I, I guess I just didn't expect the whole message to be about this, but I, I'm not upset. I like it. So on this Christmas day, oh. my heart and my thanks go to all who are serving one another, ah. all who are caring for our common home mm. and all who see and seek the good of others, yeah. not least the friend we do not yet know. Huh. In this way, we bring out the best in ourselves. I wish you a Christmas of peace on earth and goodwill to all. Wow. Today and always. Wow. What the? That was really good. That was really well said. Um, not again, not the message I was expecting. I thought it was more of a recap of the year and maybe like some accomplishments and some goals. I don't, I don't know what I expected. I guess the Christmas message is just whatever, uh, the person giving the speech wants it to be. It'd be interesting to look at some old speeches, maybe by, by Queen Elizabeth to see what some of hers were like. But I, I really, really like the way that King Charles uh, talks and delivers the message. And the content of these messages is great. Uh, it's pretty amazing. It, this was just about, like, being a good community and, and helping each other and doing good deeds. Which is, you know, that is very Christmassy, like, when I think about it. So it does relate. And he tops it off with the Merry Christmas at the end. Very... It's good. That is a that's a freaking solid speech. Oh, oh, and then some harp. Oh, this is nice. Oh. Wow, so high quality too. Is this typical at the end of these? Like a choir? Oh, it's very nice. What's this? Oh. <laughs> got, got some sheep shearing in here. <laughs> it's so random. Okay. Yeah, some beautiful singing. A little children's choir. It's nice. That's, that's wow. Is that... I don't remember that from last year. Maybe there was some singing at the end. They just like kicked the production up a notch, I think. Very well shot, showing the palace and the children and the sheep shearing. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that's actually a real nice way to end it, honestly. Uh, yeah, I guess to recap, I really like that speech. I remember really liking King Charles' Christmas speech last year. 
where I know he was doing it for the first time, and this was just as good, if not better. He's very comfortable, like, in front of the camera, um, and in this role, I think, of being the person giving the address to the entire nation, which is very difficult. And he focuses on, like, very, very nice topics, I gotta say. Like, I, I think that's a great way to go about the, the Christmas broadcast. Um, again, there's nothing like this uh, in the United States. Like, the president doesn't really give a, a Christmas morning speech, let alone something this good. So, for many reasons, I actually enjoyed this very, very much. This, this is real nice. I'm glad I got to experience it as an American. Because, like I said, most Americans don't even remember that there's a, 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 a king or queen's Christmas broadcast every year. That's been happening for a long time. And uh, I've only gotten to enjoy two now. This is the second one. And I do enjoy them. They're, they're quite nice and quite in the spirit of the holidays. So, anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. Perhaps with your thoughts on this year's 2023 King's Christmas message. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to the UK and UK culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.